Hey, thank you, Mr. Jay Carone, for having me today. And uh, thanks to everyone for attending. And uh, again, happy birthday to Travis. I didn't know it was his birthday today, so that's fantastic. Um, I was asked to talk about my carnivore mindset today and what that you know actually means. Um, the truth is the carnivore mindset for me is just the first of five steps truly transforming your life of becoming the apex predator. Now, however, to accomplish any true change in anybody's life, and especially your life, and becoming this apex predator, whether that change is to be healthier, more physically fit, having better relationships with your spouse and or coworkers, um, improving your business strategies, or even establishing your personal brand, your business brand, you must start with your mindset. Now, I mentioned apex predator. What's that? An apex predator, if you know what that is, great. If not, it's basically a predator at the top of the food chain without any natural predators, right? Life in the world around us is just very hard. It can be a very dangerous place, but apex predators, they enjoy a life with no fear as they have no predators. And the truth is, most of you may think you are or just think that you're an apex predator or wish you were apex predators, but in reality and deep down inside you, you know the truth. The truth is most of you, and including me at one time, were nothing more than just prey. Now, becoming an apex predator is understanding this and realizing while you may not be there yet, it's still attainable through the actions you take and the habits you make. And I know this, and as Jake has made mention, because I've taken this journey. It's not just been a successful journey at all. For years, people looked at me and saw this young, successful man uh, and even thought I was something that I actually wasn't. And I allowed external factors to control me, and I ended up failing miserably. And, and I just couldn't understand why this was happening to me. And it wasn't until I took control of how I reacted to all these external factors that are occurring around me. And I took control of five principles of my life to start to become this apex predator, right? So listen, I'm not someone who doesn't have any empathy. Uh, in fact, I'm just the opposite, all right? You know, just to give you a little bit of history, I lost my only sibling in a horrific car, uh, just a horrific train slash car crash at the age of 20. Um, my first marriage was a physically, mentally, and verbally abusive marriage. I was fired from a six-figure executive job. I was fat. I was out of shape. I was forced to sell my forever home that my family and I had built. Um, financially, I was barely getting by. I was six figures in debt, practically homeless. Um, I held my father in his arms as he took his last breath, and I even plotted my own suicide in order to financially take care of my family, something I'm not proud of. But the truth is, so what? Shit happens, man. It happens to more of us than it does to others. And I share this not for pity, but I just want to establish some type of common ground and let you know you're not alone out there. And your life's final chapter is yet to be written. Yeah. The truth is, though, if you want to change, then you need to check your baggage and ego at the door today. And if you want pity, and as I said before, this may not be for you. In fact, when I work with clients right now, I often tell them, before I even start working with them, if you're looking for sympathy, you can go find it in the dictionary between the words shit and syphilis. You're not going to get it from me. I'm only going to give you sympathy because nothing will change if that's what I do for you. You have to make the change. You have enough yes people in your life. I'm not that guy. And if you want me to be that guy, then maybe we should just move on. So what is a carnivore mindset, right? I live in the South, down here in Atlanta, Georgia, and you see many, many front porches with rocking chairs on them. And rocking chairs are great, right? They're relaxing, entertaining, but you're always just in one spot and you never move. And I see the word term or the term worry is a lot like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but just basically just gets you nowhere. And predators don't sit there for anything, right? They don't worry. They don't worry about anybody or anything. They just wake up 
every day and kill shit. And that's exactly what they do. And that's the carnivore mindset right there. It's that simple. Just wake up and kill shit. Nothing else matters. Wolves wake up and kill stuff. Sharks every day do shark stuff. Nothing distracts any of these predators from doing what they have to do. However, these predators repeat the same behaviors over and over and over. They repeat the same successful behaviors over and over in order to survive and flourish. And in order to get to that mindset, I decided that I had to make three major changes in my life. And they are to be self-aware and self-assess consistently and often, habitualize positive and successful behaviors, and last, which is the hardest, is to remove toxic people and behaviors from my life. So how do we become self-aware? And I've seen it all, being, you know, working for large corporations, running my own businesses, being a successful sales consultant. I've seen it all. I've heard about every single excuse. And you've probably heard them too, right? Everything wrong in my life is everyone else's fault. My business is doing horrible because my people are horrible. I'm fat because I don't have time to go to the gym. I'm afraid people will not like me. I don't want to risk it, right? Um, one you probably heard recently, our country is doomed because so-and-so is president or my wife doesn't support me. The truth is blah, blah, blah. You suck because you refuse to accept the truth. And I truly believe that. The truth is you're a victim and we all act like victims and we like to be the victims. It's safe to be the victim, but predators are not victims. They don't worry about stuff that doesn't matter. And again, that is the carnivore mindset. And until you're ready to start taking inventory of your life and realize it starts with you, you're just never gonna change. My most successful client relationships happen because those people told me in the, in the assessment process at Curfee, I realize this is all my fault. And if I don't hear that, from my potential clients when I'm trying to you know, decide if I wanna work with somebody, I won't work with them. So the easiest way, and it actually it's not that easy, is to take a look in the mirror and take ownership. Take ownership of your failures. That is the only path to change, true change, and to success. Now the second thing I may mention was called um, habitualizing positive and su successful behaviors. Sorry, I have a hard time saying that word sometimes. Um, Predators do not repeat negative behaviors, all right? They repeat and evolve positive habits to kill the prey. Now, the problem is as humans, is we allow negative behaviors and influences to come into our lives and that dictate how we behave. And by allowing this, we do not get the desired outcome we want. So we must reprogram ourselves. And how do we do that? Well, you could change bad habits by not actually changing them, but creating new, good, and positive habits to replace the bad ones. Again, we're not changing the habits, we're just replacing them with good ones, and eventually those type of habits will fall away. So if I were to give you an example, let's use sales as an example, and I'm gonna make it very elementary for you. Um, as an example of increasing sales appointments with new prospects, right? If that was what I had to do and I wanted to make a change in my life or I wanted more appointments with new prospects, I would first establish an alarm. And if I wanted to approve my appointments per week and per month, I would establish and set aside some time every single day, like the first thing in the morning, like 8 a.m., to make sales calls before I did anything else when I walked into the office. I wouldn't look at my email, I wouldn't take meetings, I wouldn't go stand by the, the water cooler and chat with people. My first priority every single morning, my alarm would be to sit down and start making sales calls. Now, the activity I would create would be actually to make 10 calls to potential clients to set appointments for the upcoming weeks. And I would make sure that during that time I set aside for this activity that I would accomplish that activity. It's not doing 10, it's not doing five, it's to do 10 every single day. It's establishing that behavior. And then once I've done that every single day, I reward myself or present myself with an accolade, right? An accolade is basically just a recognition of achievement you give yourself. And in this scenario, for this example, you know, you can, record, you can reward yourself for making those 10 calls by like establishing a prize for yourself. 
Um, and that could be like going for a walk or, you know, reading your favorite book or, you know, go and get a cup of coffee across the, the street at the coffee shop. Um, so, but basically how I would habitualize that, this is one way to habitualize behaviors. It's basically, you know, set yourself an alarm at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. to do sales calls. My activity is to do actually 10 sales calls and that reward for those sales calls is a cup of coffee from across the street. Now, personally, I have a broader approach to this, right? I actually have a higher level approach where I'm not, you know, and I'm not a big drinker or smoker. I want me to think that because I don't do that a lot. However, I do appreciate the smooth taste of bourbon and a very fine cigar. So each week I set objectives for myself and my, and my business. And if I meet those objectives, and they're very high level objectives, I treat, to my, I treat myself every Friday evening to one glass of bourbon with one chupacabra. And that's it. And if I don't meet the, those expectations, I just don't get those rewards. And I think that's the hard part that a lot of people say, well, you know, I try, I'm going to give myself a reward and I, I just don't do it. I don't get it. So um, that's, you know, that's how I habitualize behaviors. Um, the last one, and I think it's the hardest, is removing toxic behaviors and people in your life. And, and again, this is truly, truly difficult, a very difficult step. Um, but out of all of them, this is the best thing you can do for your life. And the reason it's hard is because it will require you to, again, take inventory of those people in your life that are in your circle. And successful people surround themselves with successful people. Losers hang with losers. And if you could really sit down and take inventory of those around you, and it could be family members, it could be, it could be your parents, it could be a spouse, um, it could be your own kids. And it's a really difficult, very difficult uh, process to go through, but it's very necessary. Again, it's extremely scary. And if you know what you bring to the table, that means you're not afraid to eat alone. Understanding this road you're going to go down requires you to be extremely clear and driven. And you're, you must accept that people's feelings are going to get hurt. And you don't have to be an asshole about it, but you do have to be honest with people. So I'm going to give you an example. I mentioned earlier that I was in my very first marriage. I was in a very physically abusive relationship with my ex. And for years afterwards, I allowed her to continue to abuse me even after the divorce because I did it for the kids. I thought that, you know, taking this abuse, I was being the bigger person. It was for the greater good. And I did not want to lose my relationship with my kids, dot, dot, dot. And the truth is, I was trying to reason with something that was toxic, and you just can't reason with that. And once I decided to cut that out and stop that connection, my life and my relationship with my older children became even better, and it's better than it's ever been. And, and the truth is, I mean, yes, I would have liked to have been different, and I would have loved for, for it to be different, but it just couldn't, and I had to accept that. Some people in your life, even close to you, are going to be toxic, and they're not going to stop ever. And I was not, going to, but you know, you have to accept that you're not going to let that person control and dictate your life and your relationships. So it's very difficult. And and the second part of removing toxic toxicity uh, from your life is to live your life with no expectations. And I think this is a true one. This is how you, it's not actually removing, you know, toxic people, but kind of toxic behaviors. And this toxic behavior, uh, you, you might've heard it before, but it's one I have recently accepted in the last couple of years, and I've seen a huge change in my life. And what I mean by that is living without expectations is, that means my happiness is not gonna depend on anyone else, anybody else's actions but my own. So let me give you one example, and this is one I used to be horrible at. If I tell my wife I love her and she doesn't say it right back, I'm okay with that, and that's fine. However, if you find yourself getting upset with the person you said that to, that's on you and not on them. You know, you don't know what kind of day they had. Maybe they're just not feeling it right now. So you need to ask yourself, did you truly say it to tell them you love them or did you say it in order for them to say it back to you because that's what you needed to hear for your own happiness? And if that's the case, man, that's really, really messed up. And quite frankly, it's kind of narcissistic. So, and, and this took me a long time for me to realize this. And I, you know, I accept that I was a narcissist in regards to this, 25 years to be exact. I mean, I lived the past 25 years of my life 
doing things, saying things, being successful for just all the wrong reasons. And what it came down to, my whole life was just a house of cards. And so I kind of preached to my kids and I preached to everyone else is, man, you got to love yourself first. Do it for yourself. Build your own life. Then find someone you want to share your life with and not who you need to share, share your life with. My wife of 15 years, you know, we, we've had our struggles and we're still working on those, not because we don't love each other. We, we truly believe we do, but because I needed her love originally due to, my, due, to, due to my depression and the years of abuse that I had, I needed that. I used her affection to give me affirmation, and that is absolute, absolutely wrong. And I no longer get caught up on what other people think, say, or do, and I just put stuff out there. Man, I put out love. I put out positivity. I put out the truth into this world, and I expect nothing in return. So if you want to be a, if you want to be a part of that, that's great. And that's how I live it. I have my life. If you want to be a part, that's great. If not, that's on you. It's not on me. And I'm not going to worry about it. And what you're going to find out is you're going to see a big change in you. And people are going to see this change, right? And they might not understand it. And guess what? That's good. That's fine. I have many people the last several years said, man, Kerfee, you have changed. And they haven't said it like positive. Oh, Kerfee, you've changed. I said, man, you've really changed. And I just simply reply and smile at them and just say, you know what? You're right. Thank you. They don't need to understand. It's not their job to understand, nor do I care if they understand. Um, as a kid, I was a, I was a huge wrestling fan in the 80s. Right? I don't know if anybody remembers this. Um, and, and for whatever reason, you know, back in the 80s, had some great characters, you know, the Hulk Hogan's and, you know, uh, and uh, you know, the Junkyard Dog and some of these guys that were out there back in the day. And I always liked the heels better than the heroes for whatever reason. I think it's because they always like to do things on their terms. And one of my favorites was the Hot Rod Rowdy Roddy Piper. And he had a saying that I still use today, and I believe it is a total carnivore mindset. And it, it went something like this. Just when you think they know the answers, I change the questions. And think about that. I, it's just, it, I love that saying because life has its ups and downs, and that's a fact. And what will make your life more amazing and more rewarding than anything is when you pick yourself up after everyone has counted you out, turned off the lights, because they have no idea who you really are and what's about to happen. I'm going to end this by sharing a little story with you that I think that kind of puts us all together. Earlier this week, I attended the funeral of my 50-year-old cousin who died from complications of COVID. Um, and I was asked to speak to my speak about my cousin at the funeral. And I only spoken at one other funeral before, and that was my father a few years ago. And my father was a very, you know, tough man, but a man that was very influential in my life. And I knew what I wanted to say, something for I, I just knew I wanted to say something for my cousin, but I wasn't quite sure where to start start. So I started where it all began. I went back to my childhood and my cousin and I were just childhood friends at a very young age of, you know, basically two years old. And he was two years older than me, actually. Um, we grew up in a time when your cousins were like your own siblings. And my cousin was like a big brother for me. So it was apparent that I would pay tribute to him as someone I experienced a lot of what I call life's first. Like we went fishing together, uh, my first BB guns, ATVs, you know, we did everything together. All my life first were through him. So he was like a big brother. Um, he taught me how to do a lot of these things. So as I did this speech, it was funny and it was tearful. Uh, but the true meaning and beauty behind my cousin, uh, besides those stories, was he grew up, and much like he did for me as a child, he was everybody's big brother. He was always there for you, no matter what. And if you called him with any problem, he was there to help. He did this you know, he, throughout his whole life. He just helped family. He helped friends. He had no expectations ever of being paid back. In fact, he would just refuse any payments or IOUs. Um, and he just didn't do stuff for accolades or applause. 
he did them just because it was the right thing to do. And many times I would add, reach out to him and say, hey, I, can I get a little help here? And he said, yeah. And I would offer to take him out to dinner. Or I would, you know, you know, <laughs> put some gas in his truck, whatever it was that he helped me with. And every time he refused, he would just say, yeah, cuz I just like hang with you. And I appreciate it, man. You're reaching out. And that, my friends, is what I truly believe is life is about. And today's talk might not be for you, and my approach might be too aggressive, and that's fine. I'm fine with that. But if I can leave you with one thing that I am sure about, and it's this. The meaning of life is to give life and life.